Hey guys, good morning and welcome back to Our Wyoming Life. My name is Mike and this is Hang 2022. We are now on day 15 of uh, Hang here on the ranch. We've had weather delays, we've had a broken baler, and that slowed us down. And today we have another, another delay that we're going to be dealing with that brings us down to just two tractors. We've got uh, the 6410 here and the uh, 4055 that we're going to be bailing with. And I'm going to kind of bring you along with me today as we get some, some more haying done. And I'm going to kind of get you up to date on what's going on as well as getting our other tractor hopefully uh, back up and running as it has a, uh, a flat shoe and is going to take a little bit of work to, to get back up to, to working speed. It is nice having the three tractors and luckily enough when Gilbert passed away that uh, we had three tractors at that time. Uh, these tractors are almost 30 years old, but they're still hanging in there and keeping on, keeping on for the ranch. So up until right now, uh, we've actually harvested about 400 acres of hay off the ranch. Uh, like I said, we're on day 15. We were kind of seeing like the light at the end of the tunnel. Speaking of light, it is getting bright out here. It's uh, about six o'clock here this morning and uh, about 60 degrees, which is why I'm wearing a sweatshirt. But we are looking for a high temperature today of 97. It's gonna be ridiculous today. So I'm trying to get as much done as I can early. And of course I wanna be in the tractors that have air conditioning like this one and uh, not the 4055. The air conditioning is kind of a little dead on that one. So our goal today is to actually get a field raked and baled this morning and then get that tractor fi fixed back up, get a new tire on it get it back to working on raking so that we can get back to mowing. We've got about uh, another 100 acres or so that we're gonna try to harvest. And we're at 260 bales right now. So that averages out to about a bale every acre and a half or so, which isn't horrible considering we're coming off the backside of this drought. I've also been cutting some fields that we normally wouldn't cut here on the ranch. They're not even fields. They're just like little sections of pasture that happen to be flat and have good grass. So that's what we're working on today. Uh, yesterday we cut another about 20 acres or so. We got about 21 bales off of it. Might be about 25 acres. I really haven't measured it. And we cut another uh, little section here. I think this is probably only maybe 10 or 12 acres and we're going to be bailing this up this morning hopefully that gives us about an extra truckload of hay an extra 30 bales uh, towards our goal which is 360 bales is kind of what we're looking for winter is 180 days long here i want to have two bales per day i'm not sure if that's exactly what i need but that's that's the number that i'm aiming for and then i'll be able to break it down and see exactly um, what we need and what we're going to have to have to get through the winter. But two bales a day, I think, will actually get us set pretty well. I hope that's uh, pretty close to what we're looking for. So what we have to do is because we're just down to this tractor and the baling tractor, and I don't like taking the baler on and off, the, the, the 4055 is kind of a pain in the butt, we're going to be switching the 6410 from the mower, which is on it now. Jeff was down here mowing this little section here yesterday. We're gonna switch this off and get it on to the rake. So let's get that done and uh, we'll get our day started. If you really do enjoy following along with what's going on on the ranch, um, I would encourage you to head on over to our website, ourwalminglife.com. Sign up for our newsletter, which you can do right there. Super simple, super easy uh, newsletter. We try to do it about once a week and keep you guys uh, really up to date on what's happening around here on the ranch. Also, you get to find out about really cool things like uh, sales, which are happening on our website right now. We've got beef jerky on sale. Uh, and along with all of our merchandise and drinkware and all that kind of stuff is on sale as well for 10% off. So 
those kind of things you can find out about early just by being a, uh, a recipient of our newsletter and you can sign up for free it doesn't cost a thing all you have to do is check your email As we get going here once again uh, we are raking up this little tiny chunk hopefully getting a few extra bales out of it towards our extra load of hay that we're trying to pull out of summer pasture down here we still have about 80 more acres that we are going to harvest and get harvesting today uh, once we get finished up with this we'll start cutting down there and we also have to get that tire back up and uh, inflated on the on the tractor actually it's going to be a new tire uh, but what we're doing down here is actually rolling these windrows together once again to make a little bit larger windrows so that we put more work on the rake, less work on the baler. Uh, baler has a lot more moving parts and obviously costs more to run. So if I can rake together a couple windrows and make the baler work a little less hard, I'm definitely going to do that. So we're going to take a little bit extra time raking so that baling happens a little bit faster and a little bit easier. So we're gonna cruise around this field and uh, hopefully this goes uneventfully and uh, we'll be back over here to bale in, uh, well, for you guys, just a few minutes or even seconds. For me, eh, a couple hours. Alrighty guys, raking is all done. So it's on to the next step of this whole process. Oof. We uh, have about, this is, you know, this is a small field. So uh, I'm hoping to be able to get about nine bales out of it, but it didn't take me that long to rake. So I may not get that many, but I can say that we have two hours into mowing it, an hour into raking it, probably an hour into baling it. And, uh, you know, all told, what, 30 or 40 bucks worth of fuel into the whole thing? Well, maybe maybe a little more than that. A uh, little bit of time, obviously. Um, we don't get paid for our time, so that doesn't really matter. Net wrap, you know, that kind of thing. It's not going to cost us that much to put up this little section. Either. This little area is what I'm talking about. So we're going to we're gonna get this up. We're going to take this, this, uh, this hay that we get. We're going to add it on to our other 21 bales that we got as bonus hay off of some weird little fields. I'll show you here really quick. Um, we're actually pulling up to them because I finished baling them yesterday. And that's where the baler's at. So working our way. Uh, back over here to the baler so we can grab it and get it back down here. Not very far away, uh, maybe a quarter of a mile at the most, but just right around the bend. All right, here's our baler 
and this field along with actually this field right over here um, yield us those, those 21 bales. About 20 acres, um, we're calling them bonus fields just because they're normally grazed off, but they were relatively flat, had some decent hay in them, and we decided to get them harvested. There's the tractor up there we're gonna deal with next. It's broken down, and uh, I don't know how much fun that's gonna be, but we are gonna get that guy up and running today. First though, let's go get our baling done. Like I said, we're looking for a temperature today of 97 degrees. The air conditioner doesn't work great in this tractor, so time for the sweatshirt to go. It's about, uh, what is it, it's 70 degrees now, so warming up a little bit. Off to work. And we're back over here, ready to get started with bailing. I, uh, I left my drone in the pickup. So, no drone shots of bailing, but uh, I'll get you some nice ground level views. Uh, we're gonna run through this really quick. I'll let you know how many bales I get and how long it took. Here we go, our first bale of the morning. We'll kick it out, and then we'll uh, check the moisture level on it as well. moisture tester and what we want to do is just check the moisture of this bale now this was baled yesterday or this was cut yesterday so it should be relatively dry we're hoping we're showing 14 and a half for a moisture level fourteen point four you just want to check it in multiple spots 14.5, 16 there. So a little bit of, a little bit of a wet spot there. But that's not horrible. Uh, we'll be able to get the rest of this bailed up and ready to go. And there we go, about an hour, um, right in there. And now it's 73 degrees and we got five bales. Isn't great, I was actually hoping for nine. I'll take five. I kinda, I had time as I was driving around to think about this a little bit more. And the, with the price of fuel, obviously, uh, for some reason I had that wrong in my head. So if we, oh, there's a snake, look at that. Woo. Hi, buddy. Kind of made me jump a little bit. Anyway, uh, with the price of fuel, uh, the way that it is, which, you know, whatever, 
Uh, if we've got two hours into cutting and I put that at about four gallons an hour, that's 20 bucks um, uh, an hour, so $40 into cutting, and then an hour into baling, an hour into raking, that's another, so we're up to 80 bucks uh, in fuel. So let's just round that up to 100 in fuel just in case I've got something else screwed up. And that doesn't include, obviously, filters and maintenance and all this kind of stuff, which we're going to be taking a look at next. But if we do, then we say, uh, with just fuel, each one of these bales that we just made out here is 20 bucks. So, not horrible, considering that it would cost me about 200 to have a truck come in and drop off bales per bale. So, 100 bucks versus 1,000 bucks definitely worth it but once we start rolling in maintenance and all that kind of stuff that's what we're gonna be doing here as soon as we finish up hang I can get all my totals done and we can take a look and see exactly what a bale actually cost with uh, fuel cost maintenance and repairs don't really include time in there but we might be able to figure out a way to do that as well and actually pay ourselves a salary which we just give back to the ranch but it's not a bad way to do it. So I'm walking back to my truck, which I left, like I said, about a quarter of a mile down the road here in another in another field, and then run back to the shop, grab some tools, because having two tractors running, while it's great to have an extra tractor or have three tractors and be able to do this, um, it's a lot nicer to have three up and running so you're not switching implements around all the time. So. We're gonna get that tire fixed today and uh, get Jeff down to cutting another 80 acre hay field. And uh, yeah, we'll just continue on with our day. Hopefully we don't run into another snake. And here we are, scene of the crime. Uh, this happened yesterday morning. I was out here raking with the 6420. Uh, fast vibration started to happen the tire actually tore up the side and came completely off the rim dropping this side of the tractor onto this side um, a lot of this damage actually did happen though when i had to move the tractor because it was hooked up to the rake we still needed to keep going so i had to pull the tractor off to the side a little bit and that's where a lot of this damage came um, but i did it really slow so i didn't have any rim damage but it did kind of tear the the tractor tire apart as you can see good news is that the tractor tire was ruined before we moved it so it really didn't make any difference at that point as long as we, like I said we were protecting that rim so our job today is to get this tire off uh, get it to town and get a new tire put on they had to order one in for me took a day to get here so hopefully it's supposed to show up here this morning we can get the rim into them and let them get that stuff put together nice thing is we do have a loader on this tractor so that takes the place of our jack but it's a little tricky because we have the spear on the front instead of the bucket so if i had the bucket we just put it down on the ground lift up the front of the tractor unfortunately with the spear we can't really do that we put the spear down on the front of the ground it's actually going to bend the spear we don't want that to happen so i brought some pallets along with me that i can lay down and use as a base to be able to push ourselves up <music>
looks like a dang war zone. All right, off to town. We're gonna get a new tire, get out here, get it fixed, and get back to work. So a quick trip to town, be back, hopefully in an hour or two. rubbery on here about six hundred dollars worth of tire and of course that's gonna adjust our price per bale when we get back and we're done and we start figuring out exactly what that number may be but for today I'm gonna stick with that twenty dollars a bale because that makes me feel good As for us, we're off to start raking behind Jeff, who's cutting that 80 acre hayfield about a mile over that way. Because as of right now, it is 97 degrees here on the ranch. Definitely a good time for some AC. As for our tire, Looks like it rolls just fine. It's out there doing its job and getting nice and dirty at it while it's doing it. Okay, let's head over there. Let's get our rake and get going. keeps on overheating so this is where I'm gonna cut you loose 
throw the drone up, get you some footage to wrap things up. But we're going to be raking for at least a couple days, mowing probably for another day, and then we'll be able to bale this field up and hopefully get to where we need to be with bales. But we'll get a final count done and then we'll come back. We'll take a look and see how much it costs to make a bale and how that's going to affect the ranch and how we're going to move forward in the future. That's all coming up, so make sure you subscribe, follow along as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary right here on our Wyoming Life. Throw the drone up! We'll